thank you very much for taking a few minutes to uh, talk with us about this incredible new movie. Thanks for having me. So I'm with The Current, which is a music station from Minnesota Public Radio. We're based in uh, St. Paul, and I uh, had the privilege of having Zach play our birthday party at First Avenue back in the day. So yeah, we're really excited to be covering this movie and covering it from Minnesota. Clearly, the setting of this story is so important here in Minnesota, which is maybe not a wildly different setting from the one you knew growing up in Ontario. Yes, exactly. Did you have any impressions or experiences of Minnesota before taking this role? I actually didn't. And I'm, I'm grateful that I've been introduced. Um, the people that I've met have been really wonderful. And uh, the experience that I had visiting after we shot the film at the Mall of America was really a beautiful and phenomenal experience. So I have very positive uh, memories at the moment. Can you tell me a little bit about that experience visiting the Mall of America? Yeah, well, um, as you know, millions of people have been following um, Zach's story now across the world. And um, once a year at the Mall of America, I don't know how long it's been now, maybe it's been six years now, um, thousands of people get together to sing Clouds um, and to honor the family and to raise money for osteosarcoma. And so we got to go to that uh, to that event and announced that the film had been made and that we were telling Zach's story in a, in a broader way. Um, and to stand amongst thousands of people who all love this story, love this young man and love his message. And to hear everybody sing together was uh, pretty phenomenal. So this is obviously a somewhat dramatized version of Zach's story, but as the closing montage makes clear, in a lot of cases, it's uh, it's pretty close to life, specific scenes and situations. And you're obviously portraying a real person, Laura Sobiak, Zach's mom. Were you able to connect with her before filming? And if so, what did you learn from her that informed your performance? Yeah, absolutely. We spent a, a great amount of time together and actually became dear friends. Um, you know, I read her book, after I was sent the script, I read her book, which is profound and beautiful and tragic um, and so honest. And I was nervous to meet her. I didn't know if I was just gonna start crying when I met her. <laughs> Cause as a mother, you know, to, to hear this story just feels devastating at first. But when I got to know her, she was able to really bring to light the beauty of their journey as well. and what they, what she's taken from it, what she's learned from it and her faith and her commitment to her family and the bolstering up of family and love and connection that she chose to do in, on this journey with her child um, really gave me a completely different perspective as opposed to just pity and mm -hmm. heartbreak, respect. I have great respect for her and great respect for the way that they all handled um, this journey. So it was amazing. It was amazing. It's the first time I once played a woman named Frances Kroll Ring, who was the assistant to F. Scott Fitzgerald in the last year of his life while he was writing The Last Tycoon. And that was an amazing experience and um, an honor to play her. But to play this kind of an emotional journey uh, was a, a big ask and a great honor. And I really wanted to get it right. And I was so grateful for Laura's help and guidance and support in it because you really have to walk that line in your performance as you do so successfully. Portraying a mom who is grieving and sort of dealing still with the shock of all of it and supporting her son through that, but at the same time, encouraging him as an artist mm -hmm. to break through with this song. Yeah, I mean, she, you know, she, she didn't let him just sit on his laurels and live in pity, you know what I mean? Or in self-pity. Um, she really did inspire him to, you know, and she says, in, she says in the script and she said it in the book and it's the reason I wanted it in the script is she says, you get to choose your story now, you know, you get to decide what that painting is, whatever that is, no matter what time you have left, you get to make a choice here. What an incredible gift to be able to give as a mom. What you're facing is scary, but you get to decide what matters most now. And she's not even sure necessarily how it came to her. I mean, she has a very strong faith, so she certainly has that. But I think she surprised herself in moments, you know. Um, she learned a great deal. We've all learned a great deal from her and from Zach. It's been, it's been an amazing experience. 
So this is a movie about an artist and a song that's inspired so many people around the world. What are some songs or musical artists who've inspired you over the course of your life or career, or maybe even while making this movie? You know, I grew up listening to classical music because I was dancing. I was a classical ballet dancer from the age of six. And by the time I was nine, I was dancing six hours a day. And I would start on the wood floor, lying on the studio floor, warming up at 8.30 in the morning, listening to the pianist warm up, you know? So I was very, um, very lucky to have that experience um, and to be exposed to classical music from such a young age and to so much art. Um, it really transcends so many things. Music really connects us, doesn't it? I mean, think about this one one song this young man wrote that has touched millions and inspired millions of people. It, the, the power of art, the power of music is really phenomenal. So for me, it was really classical music, so I can't name any one, one artist. Uh, and I have a tendency, they say people listen to music two different ways. You either listen to the music itself or you listen to the lyrics. I personally don't listen to the lyrics. I just listen to the feeling of the... I don't know, the rhythm or something, <laughs> maybe yeah. from, um, but certainly, you know, Zach's words, when you really listen to them, they're heartbreaking and they're beautiful. And the fact that he wrote them to share and say goodbye to his family is pretty incredible. Well, and a big part of the story of the movie too is the relationship between his mother and father and how they are negotiating this together as a couple, which seems like very emotionally sensitive territory. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it was, um, again, very courageous of them to share that journey because uh, it wasn't easy. It wasn't, you know, this story um, really shows the final year, year and a half of Zach's life, but really he was diagnosed at 14, you know? Um, so they had years of this. And as a couple, you're gonna go through some big ups and downs and some doubts and then some strengths and some coming coming apart and then some coming together. Um, so I think it, we really felt it was important to show that that was its own struggle. You know, as two parents, two parents, two individual people facing the death of their child, it's complicated. Well, you must be looking forward to now seeing this movie come out and seeing how it's gonna affect people who are able to see it through Disney Plus. Yeah. Absolutely. And I really, I do, I do hope it brings attention to osteosarcoma, you know, and, and I hope that their fund, like the Zach Sobiak osteosarcoma fund will get a push. Um, you know, Laura said to me, interestingly, I didn't realize this, that children's cancers don't get a lot of attention and they don't get a lot of donations because they're not as common. Um, so I really hope that this can make some kind of a difference. Well, thank you so much for taking a few minutes to talk with me. Congratulations on the film and good luck with everything. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thanks, you too.